Welcome to the special video version of the Student Ministry Podcast, episode 76. Today, we're going to be talking to John Decker. John is the man behind Every Student Sent, which is a unique community-based platform with a vision of connecting students to existing ministries, churches, and each other in order to propel them toward gospel-centered mission as they navigate and engage culture during college. Every Student Sent is an initiative of Campus Renewal, and not only is there a great database of campus ministries and churches within the range of most colleges and universities in America, which has already been helpful for our students, but also there are tons of resources to help train your students as they take their faith and hopefully share that with others on their campuses. I'm so excited for you to hear from John Decker today. Not only will you hear his story, but also the vision and the purpose behind Every Student Sent, but you'll also be able to hear about all the amazing resources they have for you and your students. Before we jump into that, we do wanna thank you so much for listening to the Student Ministry Podcast. If you have the ability to, please like and subscribe and please leave a positive review on your favorite podcast app. That just really helps us be able to uh, you know, spread the news of the Student Ministry Podcast. Also, we want to thank our sponsors of this episode of the Student Ministry Podcast. Our first sponsor is G-Shades. It's a youth ministry curriculum and teaching strategy focused on helping students see every life situation through the lens of the gospel. There's several options to fit everyone with three plans to choose from. This curriculum gives you the resources that you need to do what you do better. Do you need message outlines, a discussion guide, and a game? That's just $16 a month. If you're looking for a higher production value, including bumper videos, Instagram devotionals, and parent guides, that's $25 a month. And do you want an affordable youth ministry video curriculum that can help you increase your online reach during this pandemic? G-Shades has you covered for $36 a month. You will not find a better youth ministry video curriculum at that price point anywhere. G-Shades really sets itself apart by helping students see the gospel applies to every life situation that is out there. And if you want to find out more about Mike Haynes, the founder of G-Shades, you can check out episodes 32 and 55 of the Student Ministry Podcast. So go ahead and head over to gshades.org to download season three of G-Shades Youth Ministry Curriculum, and be sure to use the promo code T-S-M-P-O-D for the Student Ministry Podcast at checkout to get an extra 10% off. G-S-H-A-D-E-S dot O-R-G and use the promo code T-S-M-P-O-D. G-Shades, seeing life through the lens of the gospel. Also sponsoring this episode is Men Hub Youth, which was actually developed by a fellow student pastor to help people like you and me. MenHub Youth helps you store and track student, staff, and parent info, as well as your attendance for all of your events. There are a lot of great features, but today I want to talk to you about groups. You can create managed groups by assigning specific students to it, or, and this is the really cool part, you can create smart groups that automatically filter the right students into it. You can use smart groups to see all the high school boys, or every student from a certain school, or even all the students that regularly attend on Sunday, but have never been to a Wednesday in the last month. Smart groups are like a superpower. On its own, the app is only $5 on iOS and Android, and you can use it forever on that one device without ever having to pay again. But if you want to synchronize your database across multiple devices or with your leaders, you can sign up for the MenHub Sync service and support the Student Ministry Podcast by visiting menhubsync.com slash s m p that's m i n h u b s y n c dot com slash s m p for student ministry podcast you can find the links for both g shades and men hub in the podcast show notes thanks so much to g shades and men hub for sponsoring this episode of the student ministry podcast all right with all that being said let's jump into this conversation with john decker of every student sent Hey, John, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Hey, thanks for inviting me, Steve. I'm pretty excited about this. and I've I've enjoyed getting to know you also. Absolutely. So, yeah, we've gotten to know each other a little bit, um, especially over the last few weeks. But uh, kind of our a little bit of our our history goes back uh, a few years. But um, maybe some of the the podcast listeners have have never heard uh, of you and your resources today. So um, I'd love to start out before we jump into every student sent to just hear your story, um, kind of where where God's brought you over the years to get you to where you are today. 
Sure, Steve. And I think some of this uh, will be helpful and thread into the overall purpose of informing uh, youth leaders. So I became a believer halfway through college. And I remember uh, the the moment I received Christ, it was an amazing thing. I, I said, you can actually know God and sense his presence and you're forgiven and you're going to live forever. Nobody knows this. we got to start telling people. So this is way back in the 1900s. But, um, <laughs> you know, it was like no one in our circle really knew that Jesus was alive. So we started telling people and people came to faith. And there was kind of a little movement in our, in our neighborhood, and, you know. And to us, that was how the whole thing rolled. And that whole generation of us are still walking strongly with the Lord today. Um, we noticed as we had teenagers and <clears throat> they're in a Christian school, um, hey, they're all loving the Lord. And thankfully, all my kids are walking with the Lord now. I, you know, one of them is married to a FCA leader in New York State. And so, you know, it's uh, it's good. But we noticed in the, in the school and in the church that they didn't have that same fire and zeal to reach out to others. And also it... It carried through that when, you know, the youth leaders, you know, saw them going off to college, a huge number of them, like at least half, were just drifting away, like really quickly. And, and their, their roots as juniors and seniors weren't always that sound. You know, they had kind of a dual life sometimes mm. and things like that. So, you know, noticing that, um, I, I got thinking, you know, what is the way that God transfers his, his um he transfers his uh, his zeal from one generation to know it to another, and I think the the way that happens is by having them experience the life changing power when they actually lead someone else to Christ, see the change, and grow and, and get a disciple. And I think until then, you don't really have the right, mm. you know, the the, the 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 total engagement. In fact, you know, Greg Steer, you know, one of our partners. Um, with Dare to Share, you know, he says the the beginning of discipleship um, can be evangelism because that puts mm-hmm. the zeal and the fire and the reason why you want to learn about all the aspects of di- discipleship and why you might want to learn apologetics and why you might learn to share. So, you know, he's kind of inverted things, and we totally agree with that. Yeah. So um, to try to figure this out, um, my wife and I planted an university chapter at Syracuse University. Mm-hmm. And we noticed that the uh, the Christian kids were hitting the social scene, and they just weren't doing very well. They uh, they would get um, kind of pulled away by their friends, you know, really rapidly. And you know, then we learned about the seventy percent statistic mm-hmm. that that Barna and others quoted. That you know, this is why we can see firsthand why that is happening. Um, so the other thing we noticed is that the non-believers were kind of parachuting in for the first time in their life. They're not connected to any peer group. They're just alone and they're ready to reinvent themselves, try new things, meet new people. And we saw, you know, what would it be like in America if we're normal for high school juniors and seniors to really look, lean forward into college and be excited about how to engage? And if they could land on campus and participate in what we call the sweet spot, those first few weeks when when the new freshmen are just open to anything. Yeah. Um, you know, so this really crystallized when we learned about an university chapter in Geneseo, New York, a little south of Syracuse, where a student got radically transformed right in the beginning of freshman orientation. I mean, he was um, he was set free. He was he was telling other people he was he was went from darkness to light. And these students, you know, probably for the first time saw that. And they said, wow, that's amazing what God can do with one of our peers. So mm-hmm. they partnered with that kid, and they ended up leading 26 other kids to the Lord in that dorm that semester. Wow. I mean, that's it's incredible. Like, it's like a mini revival, you know? Yeah. It was like, I think of it like popcorn going off. Visible change leads to visible change leads to visible change. Yeah. And so right time, right place. And um, so we imagine when they go home for Christmas, they go back to their youth group or their Christian school, and they go, hey, guys. Now we really understand this walking with Jesus thing. It's all about life transformation and helping your friends. We're doing it. You can do it too. So in the, in our cycle, we actually program this in. We encourage them to go back for a college experience night and, and help activate their youth group and say, this would be a great time to adopt the Christian school, you know, and, and, you know, use, you know, 
any of the resources that are available with, um, uh, you know, many of the ministries that do that. So we, so knowing that, you know, and, and thinking about that, uh, I then was headed off to uh, uh, staff conference, university staff conference in 2008 in St. Louis. And I remember doing worship, the Lord really spoke to me. He said, I want you to start, you know, transitioning away from your job. I was working at Lockheed Martin and, um, you know, transition, or I guess then it was maybe Phillips, but transition away from your, your telecom and your aerospace world. And I'd like you to try to help make this happen. So I started, you know, transitioning. And first I started working with um, Young Life and InterVarsity. I thought maybe these two could couple. And I found the Young Life campaigners were really hungry for something like this. And so I'd go to the meetings early in the morning mm-hmm. and, um, you know, they would, they would gravitate towards it. And we worked with some of the local universities. So then I thought, well, you have to create a website and do all this, you know, work and this lot of work. So I, I, was, I was looking for partners. I did discover one in Arizona that, that ran with this for a while that actually was kind of leading the way in this, but they eventually phased out. So come to pass over a number of years, kind of keeping this going and doing a tent maker job in, in the meantime, I found um, Cal- uh, Campus Renewal in Austin, Texas. I bumped into them. And they were really game to do this. In fact, they'd been thinking about something very similar. So I can hmm. see, you know, God pulling this together. So we hooked up with them and they raised some funding, built a website called Campus Ministry Link at the time and, uh, <clears throat> and ran with that. And then about a um, 14 months ago, we launched Every Student Sent, which is a whole new technology. It's actually a social platform and, you know, just we'll talk about that more on the podcast, but that works really, that works really well. So that's kind of my story. That's cool. That's awesome. I love how yeah, it really started from your your experience with campus ministry, like your own story. Like this, this is where God grabbed you, and now you're trying to inspire and put resources into other students' hands to replicate that as much as possible. And and I think I found the same thing. It's it's really interesting that that zeal question. Like, how can we actually replicate that zeal for Jesus and zeal for for sharing Him with others? Um, which is which is really cool to see how how Campus Ministry Link has now evolved into every student sent and and all the resources you guys have, not only to put campus ministries in you know students' hands and say here's what's out there so you can get involved, but also here are some great resources for you to actually share your faith and and get out there and and you know proclaim God's greatness on, on your campus. So walk us through a little bit about what every student sent really is. I kind of dove into it just a little bit there, but I know that there's so much more um, what what actually is every student sent and and what is the the entire platform? Sure. So it's a it's a platform that pulls together partners. So we have a coalition of some of the major denominations, um, really all the major college ministries and a growing number of the smaller college ministries. They've partnered with us, a number of youth ministries, NMYM, uh, Dare Share, things like that, Alpha Youth. And so um, it's this platform to work together to make it normal in America for all students to, to lean forward into college and to, to anticipate it with, with some joy and enthusiasm, get them prepared, and then create that experience during the first weeks of college. So then the other side of it is really helping students learn to multiply. Mm-hmm. You know, you might call it a disciple-making movement. It's a, it's, an, it's a ways to like learn how to share the gospel, disciple someone, lead them, help them replicate. Uh, even to create expressions of the church in their dorm, you know, to, to take that. So, or their high school. So, you know, that whole process of being a full disciple means you're a disciple maker. So what are some of those features that every student sent uh, has that, that makes that possible? When you go on the site, um, one of the first things you want to do is, is say as a student, you search for any college in the U.S. And what will pop up is ministries and churches that are there. So all the major ministries, uh, you know, Young Life, Crew, Navigators, uh, Chi Alpha, um, InterVarsity, et cetera, have given us their data. And so that because of that, we're replicated on most campuses in the US. 
So you'll find those. And then where campuses, um, so when you get engaged in a community, then local churches find out about it. They can be on there too. And we really encourage local churches. And we'd love you to, um, you know, encourage your listeners to, they can register on every student center and apply to be a church if they serve a college campus so that when kids are searching for a college, they can find a church too. So you, you find that. And, and then what the next step is you click on message the leaders. So then you can um, start actually messaging and talking to the leaders or pastors on these campuses and, you know, get to know them. You know, a student might say, Hey, I'm a junior. We're thinking about going to UT Austin and um, I'd like to know more about your group and just the pulse of, of things going on in campus. And by the way, I'm a chemistry major. Do you have any chem majors in your group? Uh, you know, I'd love to t- hear about that program from the side of one of the students. And so they get this engagement going, this, this discussion. It's both in the platform, kind of like a text conversation, but it's also kicked out to email. So you can pick up these emails and follow it that way. Um, so that's the first thing. And then the next thing is you can look at the members in the group or even at a total college level. So you can see the incoming students that are already starting to engage there. And what happens is you can start building a team so you don't go to college alone anymore. You're going with a whole raft of students that are are looking towards college, have been at least somewhat trained and kind of ready to go. And so you can find potential roommates, study partners, um, mission partners, things like that, and just friendships, you know? So it's way better than than going to college alone and just had to start from scratch. So you you know, hey, my friend's in this dorm and this friend's in that dorm. And then the the leaders, the, the youth leaders or the, the campus ministers, they get to um, interface with them and talk to the students and start helping to disciple them. Uh, they can send them video materials. There's actually Zoom integrated with the group so they can do a Zoom meeting with them. Um, sending them information and start to, you know, get conversations going in this little social network around that particular college and especially, you know, show them that, hey, there's a sweet spot the first few weeks of college, you know, let's get organized. You know, Jerry and and Joe, you're in dorm A. Um, Maybe you want to go out and do a, you know, ultimate Frisbee game and invite some of your friends and and then bring them over to small group or large group or something like that. So, um, you know, use that first period when engagement is really real. Yeah. And then um, basically you're in, you're in that social group. And so that's the thread. And like I said, you could also look at at a college level and see all the incoming freshmen at a college level, not just that particular group. So the next thing is, um, you know, you want to help 10th to 12th graders get excited about college. So how do you do that? Well, some of it is stories on the site that show how God is moving. Actually, you know, we're working like with University and crew and Chi Alpha. And they're saying more students are coming to faith on college campuses now than any time since the 70s, Jesus movement. Wow. So, you know, that's, I mean, that's a couple of years ago and, and even now through the pandemic. Wow. So um, show them stories about what God is doing. And so, so we have a courses on the site that have stories from students and like some national leaders. You know, we got like the last one, we had a couple from NA, NAMB, uh, Shane. Uh, Shane Pruitt and Paul Worcester and, and others. We got Alpha and so on. They're, they're sharing stories and they get to learn from these stories and student stories. So um, that helps a youth leader use those resources to sit down with a student and create a, get a great discussion, show mm-hmm. a video, talk with them. Um, you know, I, <clears throat> uh, I remember there was a, a youth leader in Lubbock, Texas, a number of years ago, went in kind of an early pilot version. He was going through the typical thing where juniors and seniors start falling away from the group. They're still probably coming to church on Sundays with their parents, but they, you know, because they got, they got, they got a car. It's exciting. They're starting to, you know, get jobs and sports and things like that. So they started using these concepts and really talking to students about their needs, the things that they were then looking at leaning forward into their future with college. Um, talking about the practical things, even their career and and things of that nature. And students really loved it. They started inviting 
back their attended friends. And they also started inviting other friends that even hadn't come. Just they actually, so the group actually grew in the, in the seniors and juniors because wow. of that. So that's kind of amazing. Yeah. That's Very incredible. Concerned. Yeah. Um, what else? So the training, yeah. So the, we have the training videos and um, another thing is most youth leaders could tell you right away whenever I talk with them, I said, do you have students that are especially motivated and really want to serve the Lord and invite others and looking for some adventure? It says, okay, here's what you can do. There's a, um, a mobilizers link on the site where they get invited into a mobile student mobilizers group and they, they get pulled into a national group. They get inter interface with other on fire students as far as mobilizers. They get to go to a monthly meeting. Um, they get some individual training. Um, when we have uh, national events, they get invited into a green room and meet some of the, the, the well-known speakers that they probably already know and interface mm -hmm. with them. Um, and there's a bunch of things in that that really helps them. Uh, the benefit to a church is they can then be the student leaders that start this student movement in the church. I mean, really what you want to always go after, of course, and you spell this all the time, you know, youth ministry is student leaders. Mm. So this helps them be the student leaders in the sense that we really want to grow and be mature because we want to make an impact on college campuses. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You know, another thing is that um, you find, well, kind of, I'll tell you a little story. So kind of in the, in the prototype, ways we were working with uh, black rock church in connecticut you probably know black rock mm -hmm. right because it used to be from there so the um the youth leader um had us come in and we did like a, a one day session with them showing them how to connect showing them um you know and parents actually with parents and students showing them how to connect and so on so the students did all connect and they were actually measuring prior to this they were very astute about this they're measuring this approximate 70% loss. Mm. Saying, yeah, it's about what we're seeing every year. You know, it's just, and a lot of them are falling away right in the first semester. So after that, they found that um, all the everyone in that the, in the junior and senior class um, connected and they all thrived and survived that year. Mm. And they came back with some, there's some videos on our site about that. Uh, they came back and really um, started encouraging the church. They did some amazing things on college and they actually, with it, oh, I didn't mean told to, they came back at Christmas and energized their students. That's cool. So, uh, so there's a way, you know, they're just encouraging uh, youth leaders that these are some of the benefits to just help, you know, one other thing besides all the things you're sharing to bring together uh, vibrancy in their group and then bring the graduated seniors um, back for Christmas and help energize them. Yeah, that's so cool. And I love how I like that just it, hopefully if it goes well, it just keeps going, you know, flipping over every year and there's more students going, getting energized, coming back. And there's just this, this cycle that, that starts up. Um, one of the things that I, I've loved about every student since so far um, and how we've used it is, is that ability to put that information in students' hands. I mean, even if it's as simple, if you don't use the entire site, just to be able to see what campus ministries and what churches are in the area for, for the colleges that you're looking at and be able to connect with them. And I've told several of our students and, and our uh, parents as we meet with them every year is that they're getting ready to graduate to say, like, as you're looking at colleges, I would love if our students eventually get to the point where they're making their list of criteria for the school they, they're looking at, maybe locations on there, major size of school, all that stuff. But I would love it if we can get to the point where college ministry or campus ministry available is at the top of that list. Um, that if, yeah, if the school matches up with your major size, all these different things, location, but they don't have a campus ministry. They don't have a place where you can get involved and not only grow in your faith, but also have an opportunity to share your faith. And maybe that school is not for you. And being able to kind of put these resources in their hands, we're able to set them up to know what ministries are in that, that area so that they can actually get involved, but also inspire them and equip them and empower them to go out and share their faith as well. So that's, that's really cool for us to, 
to be able to aspire for that goal, like this, this is a great resource. Um, how have you specifically seen every student sent have an impact on specifically youth workers, students, and even parents? Yeah, sure. Um, and let me, uh, let me just mention a couple other features that could that sure. play into, into that question. So one thing is a, a youth leader can actually upload their students. So they can um, just create an Excel file, upload junior, seniors, maybe 10th graders. And what that does is it gives them, they, they can opt in the students. So, you know, they're volitionally opting in, but once they're there, you have a dashboard that you can see their progress. Are they engaging with, with the system? Are they inviting others? Are they connecting with other ministries? So you know who's really being helped and who may need a little assistance. So yeah. that's a, a big plus. And I'd like to say that um, also, um, all, the, all or most, we found a few gaps, but most of the um, public schools in the United States have been loaded into our system. So when a student signs up and they usually indicate on their registration, which high school they come from, that actually puts them into a group at that high school. So over time, all the you'll be able to see in the high schools the different students that are there. And, and you, as a, as a youth leader, can actually join that too, or your church and, 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 and you know, Young Life and FCA can be part of it. So at that school, there's a, a group of students that are kind of leaning forward into college at each mm. high school, right? That's so cool. that's a nice thing. So that um, is cool. I, I'll actually just say, I love how you've also incentivized that a little bit to like make some progress in there. And you see that on the dashboard as well to like, like there's a, there's incentives to, to keep it going, whether it be, you know, like, you know, badges or whatever that like, okay, this is, I want to, I want to make this progress and, and everything. It's not just, uh, you know, just something to do, but there's, there's some, there's some incentive behind it beyond just the opportunity to share the gospel. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, in terms of helping uh, youth workers, so we've seen, you know, f- first thing is you know you can add your church, so then um, that way you can be attracting other students. It might be for, for your young adult group, but you know, be coming into the church from the college, and then um, you know, as we said, um, this idea when students are need something very tangible to help them go forward. Um, I've mentioned all the the kind of the, the face sides of getting excited about going to college and everything. So that will help energize your group. There's also some practical things. There's resources on the site to help students and parents figure out the um, right career and direction. So we partner with um, Crown Financial Ministries, Career Direct, and we'll be adding some others. And so this gives practical ways to help them. That's very, you know, in that point, that's exactly what the students are doing. What college do I apply to? What's my major going to be? Well, they need help then. And how cool is it if a student can hear from the Lord, find their direction, and they actually understand how that can eventually go forward into serving eventually. So we sometimes, some people use the term, the seven mountains of society of culture. So Mm -hmm. the idea is let them think now, and we're actually partnering with business ministries to help with the transition from college to the workplace. But think now how God might use you you can refine that during college, and then you know exactly how you can get plugged in and influence society. Mm. Um, so that's cool. There's also um, assistance in there to keep students out of, out of college debt. I mean, there's so many stories I've heard about, like, you know, you graduate and you want to go into ministry and you can't because the ministry has a debt ceiling for that. Or you marry somebody with a huge amount of debt and then you're starting off your life with a huge amount of stress or you're living at home for another three or four years, you know, until you can, can afford to buy a house or you can't mm-hmm. buy a house for, you know, additional five years. So, um, so there's real practical resources on there to help them, you know, avoid the debt and so on. So these are kind of some tangible things that you can talk about, you know, parents Absolutely. love this too. And we'll talk a bit about parents later. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, well, you know, it's, just there's a benefit that you don't want to lose the student. You poured all this into, why have, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70% of them wash out when they go to college? Um, let's pour into them and, and make sure that happens. But not just that, that they can become disciple makers. So the best defense is a good offense. 
right? So, yep. they're, they're, you know, if you go to college and just see how can I be safe and not touch the world and not be infected, that's not going to work very well. It's really, you got to lean forward and saying like, Jesus, I want to help other people. I want to love mm. them with the love of Jesus. So that gives them strength. Um, the, um, and I said, the training material, you know, gives you a, a set of curriculum and there, there's more and more we're adding to help, you know, work with your students. Um, this is an open platform. So there's more and more things being added. For instance, you can, there's, there's social, in addition to the social groups for your church, for the school, so you can have social group, groups there, but uh, some of our partners are creating social groups on there. For instance, if you type in Dare to Share, you'll find uh, a social group built around that. So these are people that are getting discipled by Dare to Share, but kind of in a team talking to each other and then saying, talk, hey, how can we apply this when we go to college, mm. right? Uh, the same with Claim Your Campus, uh, the same with Alpha. Alpha is interesting because if students can really learn to run Alpha in, in youth, you know, in, in, as a youth, then they really know how to apply it when they land on college as a new freshman, you know, invite yeah. the roommates over. Yeah. Um, so those things like that. So there's, and we invite pastors, youth leaders, ministries out there that are hearing this. Um, you can do the same thing. It, like I said, it's open platform, just um, reach out to me or you can just see what, what, how it's done on the platform and you can express that. That's really cool. Yeah. I love that. I love the idea behind it. You're, you're basically just putting these resources and tools in people's hands to, to think outside their, the walls of their church, outside the walls of their ministry. Like we are in this together. And so I love that there's even, you know, organizations that like dare to share that are beyond just one church that are there. And it really creates this unity um, idea. Like we are, we are going out there to many different college campuses as one church, not just my local church, but together and, and able to hopefully, you know, spread the gospel together with, uh, with a bunch of other Christians that are probably coming from <laughs> all around the world to this one campus. Um, hopefully with the same goal of not only to get a great education, but also to be used by God while I'm, while you're there for those, those few years. So that's really cool. Um, I love how you mentioned parents stuff, like, cause that, that was this one thing when we were talking a couple of weeks ago that really stood out to me that I didn't realize was on there. Um, you guys have a lot of resources to help parents. Um, so that's probably the, one of the big things that I'd love to, for you to share, like what, what is there for parents? Because like, we can get the parents pulled in then the students are getting on there, they're checking it out and everything. And it's the whole family involved in this. Yeah. Parents are so key for, I mean, God has actually obviously instilled them as the main disciple makers for their own students and, and they love their students and, and they want to see them do well. So they're, that's sticky. You know, parents, parents learn about this again, involved. they, they really get involved. And um, they, so, which we, so using this, a couple of things happen. They can work with their students and start doing the college search together and says, well, you know, let's not look at a college that doesn't have good college ministries, right? Or if we're making a decision between a Christian college or a secular college, you know, maybe you can help them to do that. So they're engaged in that whole college search process. And then, um, as we said, the, the college major and career, well, they're, they're really embedded with it. You know, that, that last uh, couple of years before you go to college is a key time. The, the students are becoming young adults. They're getting a little more mature. Um, before they go away to college, it's a key time to really gain traction with your students and something they're interested in, you know, rather than just, you know, one word answers and things like that. They just sometimes yeah. get from teens, right? So, um, so parents love that. And so, you know, and I, I'll, you know, so really helping them to discover their purpose. You know, we said we've got um, something on there from, from Career Direct, but we're adding others. You know, I mean, who knows a, a student better, better than a parent, right? right. And so, um, can work together with the parent to do that. And there's also parent groups. So you can go on and interface with other parents around the nation that are into the same thing. There's a parents and prayer group. There's a student that get, we get on every two weeks with parents and they're praying together for, for each other and for the campuses and things like that. Um, the, uh, as we said, the, the student debt resources, they love that because everyone is struggling. Well, what's it? Look, look at this crazy cost of college. I mean, yeah. you know, $70,000 for one year. Oh, what's with that? So 
um, it's very effective. There's ways actually to negotiate lower college prices and 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 do um, very organized interviews with a department head that can put leverage on financial aid. Very practical things there. Yeah. So um, and then and then parents often, as a youth leader, if you get the parents energized around this, they can help spread it to other students, other parents. Maybe they'll help you with your youth group you know, because they're really bought into it and they can invite other parents. And of course, within any church, there's more students that the church touches than they're just in the youth group. Absolutely. And, yeah. But every, you know, so every parent you're, you're touching that student and bringing them in. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I've already got, uh, got some names of, of parents that I'm, I'm already taking some notes. I'm like, okay, these are, these are a couple of key parents that um, I'm going to get on board with me. Uh, you know, trying to really push this platform um, even further with our with our group too, because I, I think that's that's huge. I love not only the resources you put in there, but I love hearing that there's an opportunity for parents to connect, because that's that's one of the things that I found within our ministry is that parents are just not naturally connected to to each other, and they're all struggling. They're all going through hard times, trying to figure out things, and um, and we need those places where they can actually rub shoulders with each other and share stories, what worked, what didn't work, pray together and, and just help that help other parents out and to find that community. So that's, that's really cool that it's that full inclusive idea. It's not just, you know, we're, we're targeting students, but we're, you're targeting the entire family um, to come on board as well. Yeah. And you and parents can create a, a, a subgroup just for your church or for your community or for your school to get that parent interaction going. That's really cool. So, so thinking about the future of every student sent, you guys do so much already. Um, what are what are the goals for for every student sent now? Well, the the overall goal. So it's been you know demonstrated on individual churches and so on that you can reverse this seventy percent. So it's we're really trying to scale this nationally. We're in a, a right now in the beginning of a thrust to to um, do digital advertising, bring on more partners, work, work through our denominational partners. But I would say for youth leaders, um, and so we're working with NMYM, for instance, so get going through that, the information, so people can know about it. But, you know, if you think of NNYM, they're centered around cities. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call a city movement strategy. The idea is you get a couple pastors in a city to really get this, get on fire about, invite other pastors, right? And then in Christian schools. So God always moves, you know, whether it was in um, Jerusalem or Antioch or, or Samaria, you know, or Ephesus, he always moves within a city. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to tap into that and create, we have a city movement page you can go on. You can see some of the cities that we've started this process with, and we'd be glad to do this in any city or encourage like your, your youth group within your city uh, we can meet with them, uh, set up a, a Zoom conference with them, and just help them work through the nuts and bolts on, you know, what are the benefits and how do you get this going in your city. So that's one thing. Um, and we're just, we want to engage more deeply with churches and Christian schools because it's always a two-way learning process. I mean, this is, this is something God's doing. And so you really, you never know what you're going to find out until you talk with somebody else. So what we learn as we engage with churches, we learn things too in, in Christian schools. So we want to just engage deeply and, you know, figure out totally how to solve this, this problem with, with youth and really energize them. The overall goal, uh, as I said, with cities is that if you, so if you mobilize the whole city, you could see um, double the number of active Christian freshmen on a college campus. You know, if you've done this, on, we know it works church by church. If you did it within a whole city, you could double the number of active freshmen on a campus. And if you help them be engaged and know how to be disciple makers, by the time they graduate, there should be at least triple the number of kingdom-minded college graduates to go out. Mm -hmm. And and so, as I said, we're trying to work with the business ministry to help catch one. They go out and, and help them disciple there. So the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. We all need more laborers. So I'd say this movement is something that helps every other ministry because we're creating laborers. You know, in four yeah. or five years, there could be that many more laborers engaged and ready to help your city. Yeah. Um, so the city movements is big. We're um, 
we're working on an app to finish the app version of this. Of course, students love apps, and that, that's always powerful. Um, adding more resources and training and adding more denominational partners, uh, things like that. So it's it's just making it broader and deeper and better. And as I said, it's an open platform. Different people contact us, and they've got a great ministry or idea. Um, you know, they can jump on and be part of this. Yeah, that's so cool. And like I said, I, yeah, it's amazing to see how much it's grown uh, over the the time that I've known about it. Um, and I feel like, yeah, you guys are cute to continue to add more and more resources and more and more great um, things that you can put in students' hands, youth leaders' hands, parents' hands, um, campus ministry hands. Uh, that's so great. And and to be able to see yeah, like what how this could actually impact the 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 bigger movement um, is, is so great. So I know people are going to want to check it out and everything. So what what are the next steps for, for youth workers that have been hearing about it? Um, where do they go from here? Well, first they can go to everystudentsent.org. They can log on as a youth leader. And then um, there's an engage menu there. So in the engage menu, we'll have pages set for every different user type. They have one for, for churches and youth leaders. We have one for Christian schools, one for students, um, business people. And so wherever you are, you can go there and there's kind of a step-by-step -step on what to do and how to fully engage. Um, you can also contact me. My contact information is on there. It's uh, John dot decker at every student sent dot org and um, reach out to me and i'd love to you know chat with you on phone or zoom and, and assist uh, we all the time we we work with churches and schools and, and do kind of an intro zoom to get them up to speed and we're willing to do things you know with a group you can speak to a whole group you know over zoom nice that's awesome so John, we we love to give our, our guests an opportunity. Um, you have a, an audience of, of youth workers. You've already shared a ton of wisdom and resources today, but uh, I'd love to give you an opportunity to share maybe a tip or two, or maybe some encouragement for the youth workers that are out there. I'd say some encouragement is ref reflect on this and, and other things and realize that God is moving in new ways. You know, he is, he is bigger and better than the pandemic and everything else. And that um, that the fact that there is this interest with this coalition to, you know, what if we do really re reverse the 70% loss in America? What's that gonna mean to our society and our churches? And be, um, be encouraged about that and just be proactive, think about ways to uh, use this as a networking tool to expand the network and that, you know, you don't have to have grieving parents over their wayward kids anymore. You know, that, that's a burden to see these parents that all they do is go to prayer meetings to pray for their wayward parents. Well, let's mm. try to avoid that. And let's give you all the, the joy and fruit of seeing your students go off to college. In fact, in that dashboard that I showed you, you can actually track them into college and stay in communication with them. So um, that's a huge thing. So I'd say it's a, kind of a message of hope, what God's doing. You know, on, as I said, on college campuses, more students are coming to faith than ever. Um, raise that hope. Let's, you know, it, it's a God thing. Uh, be encouraged. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, so good a reminder. I think a lot of times, especially in the middle of a pandemic and trying to rethink ministry, how does this all work and everything, sometimes it's easy to to forget that that we are we're in this for for the kingdom for disciple making purposes and to to spread the word um through specifically through the next generation and and this is that's great so just a great reminder of of why we do this and and to keep after it for sure and to use great resources like you guys are providing and continuing to provide uh to just do that even better. So thank you so much, John, for, for being on the podcast today and for that all that you guys do through every student sent and everything else that you've done. Uh, we just pray that God blesses all the, that you're doing. Uh, thanks a lot, Steve. And the, um, you know, the, the, the founding ministry of this is, is campusrenewal.org. You can check that out too. And um, you know, the leadership there. So that's, you know, that's something to think about also. Well, thanks so much to you all for listening to this episode of the Student Ministry Podcast. And thanks so much to John Decker. And also thanks to our sponsors. Be sure to check out gshades.org and use the promo code TSMPOD at checkout to receive 10% 
off your order. Also, be sure to head over to menhubsync.com slash SMP to check out MenHub and also support the Student Ministry Podcast. Thanks to both G-Shades and MenHub for sponsoring this episode of the Student Ministry Podcast. And thanks again to all of you for being here for this episode of the Student Ministry Podcast. Be sure to share this with others who you think would enjoy it. And may God bless your ministry. <laughs>